Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Yeah, we thank God Almighty for giving us another blessed day of which we are going to have another episode of our discussion regarding critical thinking and nursing process. Um, our main focus is going to be nursing process, but we know that there is no way you can do a proper nursing process without wearing your critical thinking cap, right? Yes. And so we would have to briefly take you through the critical thinking process, and then we'll now concentrate strictly on the nursing process. My name is Ajaratsu Lampinle Asandiu. Yes, and the CEO of Lampinle Enterprise. My focus and interest is to impact knowledge, impact knowledge and give the best to my students and whoever, once you're a professional nurse, you should be able to benefit from it. Now let's look at what critical thinking is. It is simply the ability to reason through your cognitive skills to help you take a very good decision. Nurses do care for our patients every day. You know, we may have clients who be having multiple um, conditions. At the same time, they have so many problems. One needs to give them the best of care. And so in so doing, you have to wear you have to critically think through and then give the best of care to your patient. We do rely on those to help in making good decisions. Now, critical thinking, which is the main idea here, has so many concepts. Before you can push through this agenda, you are supposed to really um, analyze the issues well. That is, you know, we have so many puzzles of issues here and there. You are supposed to what? Analyze it. How do you analyze it? You are supposed to think through, okay? Analysis is simply um, doing something, okay? Examining something systematically in order to give proper interpretation to it. So you have interactions with your client. Your client comes to you and she asks you, you, you having history taking or you are collecting some data. You need to think through whatever the client is telling you and make meaning out of what the client says. So that is a way of what analyzing. Now you, um, the reasoning is what you're thinking through using your cognitive skills and then thinking through what the client has told you. Now you plan ahead, okay, by setting objective and then seeing the way forward of solving the problem. After that, you evaluate, okay, you compare with the standard. Indeed, the objective that I said, after solving this problem, have I really met my objective? Is it fully met, partially met, or it's unmet? If it's not met, you have to make another decision to go through the same cycle all over again until you are able to achieve the objective of it giving the best client care to your patient. All right. So one may ask, how do nurses accomplish these skills? You have to be very flexible. Don't It's not a strict jacketed formula just like mathematics where you have one plus one equal to no. Learn to be flexible in clinical making decisions, okay? If you are making any decision after you think through, but remember, you have to use your past experiences and previous experiences all merged together to help, to help your client's best outcome. And how do you do this? You went to school, you learned anatomy and physiology, you learned medical nursing, you learned surgical nursing, all these incorporated, all these previous knowledges that you learned, you are going to apply this in helping your clients. Now you have to listen to the views of others, your colleagues, you work as a team, okay? There's a collaborative team work at the workplace. If you're a student, you work as a team with your student. Try as much as possible to listen to the view of your colleagues and then see the best way to solve the problem. Now, after you've been able, you should also be able to identify the problem and select the best intervention to give the best outcome to your patient. Now, critical thinking is goal-oriented. 
okay? And it's very purposeful. It's essentially safe, you know, as we are caring for our patient, we have to give safety precautions, put in safety precautions to make sure we give safe care to our clients. Again, the students or the nurse must be competent, okay? Here, what we mean is that you should be knowledgeable, you should be skillful, and you should have experience shared or bringing to the table. Again, based on the principles of nursing process and scientific method, you bring all these to the table and then you ask yourself a question, whether your intent of caring for your patient has been successful. The reason why critical thinking is something that you can apply everywhere, but we are focusing as nurses. You remember as professional nurses, we have independent practices. Okay, so things that the nurse can do independently, please, within the code of conduct of our profession, you do your possible best to give that care to your patient. Require strategic approaches, okay, and then constantly re-evaluate, self-correcting and striving hard to make sure you give, you achieve the main goal that you set. So all these that you put in place, in a way, you have what used or wore your critical thinking cap to give best. You start thinking, you ask why, you are doing what at each point in time. Know that the questions you are asking is supposed to answer your main objective. Very, very important. If you are not an expert, you seek for an experienced person. We have expert people on the on the, on, on in the wards. Seek for their um, help so that you would, at the end of the day, give the best of care to your clients. Aspect of critical thinking here is all about using your cognitive skills, thinking through, analyzing, and bringing out experiences. So here we are saying a reflection, okay? Reflect, reflect, reflection is so, so, so important in coming and um, be, being a very, very good nurse when you are doing critical thinking. Language is so important in communication to with your clients. You should use the best language that the client understands so that you can really understand the problems of your patient. And again, you should also, also remember that intuition is so important here in critical thinking. There are times the clients might not even tell you, but with the, your intuition, which is our sixth sense. I've always told my students that every profession has five main senses. Okay, and we the nurses have six senses, and our sixth sense is the sense of intuition. This helps us to see beyond the bodies, what science cannot even bring to the table, and nurse can read through and then tell you what the possible outcome might be. Now let's go straight to our nursing process. What is nursing process? It's simply the step-by-step -step way of what? gathering data and then critically examining it, analyzing the data and then identifying client response, designing proper outcomes, taking appropriate actions, and then you evaluate the effectiveness of your action. So at the end of the day, doing all this step through a step-by-step -step action or process is going to help you what's evaluate and then you check the effectiveness of the action that you took to um, care for your patient, whether your goal has been met or not. All right, it involves the use of critical thinking like we told you, and then the common language, the nurse, is to think through the clinical problems, okay? The nurse must think through all the clinical problems that the clients present to you. Okay, she'll tell you her clinical manifestations and all that. We are going to delve deep into it. So now we just need the outline. Then later we'll look at the next video. We are going to give you the proper nursing care plan where we have identified the main client problems. We have identified the client strength and then the nursing diagnosis and all that. It will be in our next video. So please subscribe so that in our next video, you can watch that. Now let's go through the lesson. Lesson process here, usually we have to start with assessment. It has five main steps. And 
we call it at pi. That is assessment as A, nursing diagnosis as D, the planning as P, implementation as I, and then A, evaluation as E. Okay, so at pi, yes. So with assessment, and then we are saying that this is all about the five main steps in nursing process. Sorry. And then you should also remember that anytime you're doing nursing care process, you should also remember to wear your critical thinking cap, right? Good. Now, what is assessment, which is the first stage or the first phase of nursing process? Assessment simply is the systematically collecting, you systematically collect data, verify data, analyze it, and communicate the data to um, your client. We have two main steps, okay, during assessment. That's the collection and verification of the data. The collection of data is so in uh, so many, okay. So among them, we establish a database about the client needs. During we are collecting the data, we have the primary source, the secondary source, and the primary source is the information that we get from the patient directly. The secondary source could be from relatives or the folders or from other professionals. Here, these data that we have collected about client needs. We also look at the health problems, responses related to experiences and health practices, value, lifestyle, and expectations. So we have a lot of data that we collect. And among them, we want to find out the client, um, whether he has any past medical history, present medical history, what are the client's responses to the presenting problem at that point in time. Okay, so the responses you might be telling you will be, I'm having abdominal pain, I'm having headache, I'm having general body pain. All these are responses from the client based on the presenting problem. Okay, and then you now relate it with your experiences. Okay, and then with your practice, what are the values you have to, what are the client's values? What are the client's lifestyle? You know, you want to check if the disease condition he's having has direct correlation with the lifestyle so that you can do modification of what the lifestyle if the need be. Now we have two main sources of data. We have the subjective data and the objective data. With the subjective data, these are information that the client is telling you, okay? Just like I'm having headache, stomach pain, and all sorts. Now the objective data are the measurable and accurate data that the nurse gets from the client or the very what we can also use to verify what the subjective data was all about. So for instance, the client was talking about abdominal um, pain, okay? And then you do scan of the abdomen and you are able to detect there is appendicitis or there is other condition that is causing the client to experience this abdominal pain. That becomes what the results from the scan okay, becomes an objective data. The client comes to you and you are checking vital signs, okay, the temperature, the result for temperature, pulse, BP, all that are what's objective data, and so on and so forth. And we have the method of collecting data. We can do interview, we can initiate it with an interview, okay? So there's that next client relationship where you establish rapport, you make sure the interview is done in a very enclosed environment where there's privacy and confidence. And then you also make sure and trust that the client has trust in you that you are going to keep his information confidential, right? And so during the interview session, a whole lot of things also come to play. And then during the interview, you should remember that you have to use open-ended questions, right? Okay, so that it would allow this client to explore, to tell you the in-depth problems that he or she is experiencing. And then you also want to find out the history, the medical history, the surgical history, and a whole lot of other information regarding these clients, okay? Here, the clients, the nurse is doing assessments of the clients and he's touching 
the patient to feel, you see the back of the palm, to feel the temperature of this gland, whether the circulation is proper. Okay, all right. And you could see that's good facial inter um, expression. A nurse, we say if you're a nurse, it doesn't cost to smile because smiling can itself give healing to your client. Just remember that. Okay. Nursing diagnosis, that's the second phase of the nursing care process. And it describes the actual or potential health problem that the nurse can identify. In order nursing intervention, in order for nursing intervention to maintain the health status, to reduce or eliminate or prevent any form of complications. All that we are saying is that during the nursing diagnosis, before you can give a proper nursing diagnosis, you should be able to identify the client's actual problems or potential problems. Okay. And then you can now put in measures. Now we have two main parts in writing nursing care diagnosis. We have two main parts in writing nursing care diagnosis. The first part is the client's response to the actual or potential problem or even the wellness condition, okay? And then you relate it to what? The etiology or the cause. Again, in the nursing diagnosis, you should be able to tell the client's response to an actual or potential problem or wellness condition, then you relate it to the cause of the problem. You relate it to what? The cause of the problem. Now we should remember that just like our physician give medical diagnosis, and this is really related to the specific disease condition or the pathological state of the client, the nursing diagnosis is a clinical judgment about the individual family or community responses Again, responses to actual or potential problem of the client's life processes. Okay, so these are the two main difference. In medical diagnosis, they look at the pathological states of the client. In nursing diagnosis, we look at the responses to actual or potential problem of the client. I hope that went well. Now let's look at... Um, we should always remember that the during nursing diagnosis, it is more client-centered. Okay, it's more client-centered. And again, the American Nurses Association first introduced this nursing diagnosis in the 1950s. Then later, the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association established the nursing process in 19. 82, sorry, the nursing diagnosis in 1982. Every two years, remember this, every two years, the NANDA is being revised and we add on two new things due to evidence-based practice. We know that nursing is something that needs to be evidence-based before we can now accept as part of the nursing care or the general nursing care. So this is something that it's being used across the globe, whether you are in Ghana, Afghanistan, US, UK, you have to learn this information because it is so, so, so important. The step of the nursing process also allow us to give individualized care to our patients, you know, so you know the clients, in the holistic nursing care to our clients, okay? So you identify each problem, you identify specific problems to specific clients, and then you give specific intervention according to the problems that these clients may be having. Now, when you collect, you know, we talked about having so many puzzles of information out there, you should be able to what, um, this cluster of information, you should be able to, um, validate those information and now you interpret it, identify the client's needs, and then you now come out new formulation of your nursing diagnosis. So important. Now the third stage, which is the planning of care for your clients. Before you can plan, properly plan for your clients, you need to set what an objective. And this objective outcome criteria needs to be what? SMART. You have to set a SMART objective. 
where the S stands for what specific, M stands for measurable, A for achievable, R for realistic, T for time bound. And so you need to set objective, okay? And this objective that you set, okay, you prioritize, priorities are set relating to the unmet needs. So those objectives that you set and you couldn't meet those goals, you have to what? Now look at them, revisit them, and then you start planning again for those unmet needs. And then you, you revise whatever you have to do for the client in order to be able to meet your main goal. Now remember that once you have the needs, use the Maslow hierarchy of needs to prioritize. Because for instance, the client has difficulty in breathing. The client has um, um, is, is feeling hungry. The client is unable to sleep. In these three problems that the same client is experiencing, these are the responses you are getting from the clients, okay? Okay, so as a nurse, if you are prioritizing these three, you should remember that the ABC is so important in helping you to prioritize or using the Maslow hierarchy of needs. We know that A is a basic need. Without A, we are not living, right? We are going to die. And so what it means is that you have to make sure you, you resolve the problem for difficulty in breathing first. Secondly, you can take care of what's um, the other in that sequence. Okay, so we'll have an opportunity to do a proper one in my next video. Hope you would um, subscribe and watch. Priorities are classified as you have to take, start with the most important one, then the last important one. Like I mentioned, this is very simple diagram here. When you have your nursing diagnosis, you have to set your goal or objective outcome criteria of which you now put in nursing orders. And when you are able to place in the nursing orders, you follow strictly to what intervene. And after you have intervened, you during the intervention, you can look at resources of the client that can help you achieve the main goal. You can also use research findings, evidence-based facts that could be used to help in achieving the goal, intervention that can be used to achieve the goal. And then you can use your own creative ideas. That is our intuition working here, right? Your own creative. Creative that is not going to be hazardous, but it's going to be what beneficial. But remember, in nursing, we do not harm our patient, but we rather what we rather help our patient or we do good to our patient. So any good activity, of course, it should be evidence-based, right? That you think you can do to save your client, just do that and save your client. So you can see um, consultation and planning care with the physician and the nurse, okay? So here they are having a collaborative team work, okay? So we have activities that the nurse does independently. We have those that the physicians, after you have collaborated with the physician, would come out with certain plan, okay, of action that would also help alleviate the same problem. And then we can also do our own I mean, creative ideas to help solve the, the problems of the client, right? Good. Now the purpose of goals and outcome. Mm -hmm. So why do we set goals in the first place? It gives direction for the nurse to give individualized care to your patient. Again, it will help you set certain standards that will give effective intervention. And to add on, Indicates, anticip in, indicates anticipated client behavior or response to nursing care. So we'll be able to what? Know and then that would also help us to point out the exact nursing care that needs to be given to our client, right? Good. Goals of care help us to achieve with your patient in what time or frame? Like, you know that you set your objective. That goal we said must be smart. Within the time frame that you set, you told yourself two hours, 
I should be able to reduce the temperature, the high temperature to normal, right? So within these two hours, you that is what a short-term goal. Now, if a client has a cesarean section and you are dressing the wound, and it's going to take you like one week for healing to take place, okay? So within that one week becomes what? A long-term goal. We have certain pro pro problems that the clients may be having. Those ones might even take months. It's also part of what the long-term goal. So the outcome of care, what was actually achieved, was the goal achieved, was maybe the goal was achieved or not achieved, then you know the way forward. Now, regarding the intervention, this, I told you that with the intervention, we have three ways to intervene. Those are the nurse initiate through working within the professional code of ethics and standards. We have independent nursing practices that the nurse can do without waiting for the physician order. Then secondly, the physician initiated Maybe the physician has done his own, he has clocked the client and has come out with an interventional model such as um, giving a certain specific dosage of medication to the clients to um, help solve the problem. That was a prescription by a physician. Nurses, we have certain levels of nurses who can prescribe medication, but for the people that you are targeting right now, at your level, you can't prescribe, even though you are a nurse, you have not reached that level yet. And so you have to wait for the physician order. Then the third stage is collaborative intervention. We have instances that you can see this lady standing behind the client, probably is a physiotherapist. You are inviting, the client is having hemiplegia, that's half paralysis. And so you want to invite the physiotherapist to come and give two hourly um, exercises or BD, okay, to your client or daily exercises to your client to help the client's mobility to come to normal. So with that, you are working what collaboratively with what other paramedics and this you can also bring into your care plan okay so the nursing care plan is written guideline for client care organized so organized so that the nurse can quickly identify nursing actions to be delivered it helps you to also coordinate resources for care Okay, and enhances continuity of care. So for instance, I started taking care of the client and I was not unable to finish all the identified problems. I will hand over to my next colleague who will be coming for the afternoon shift to also continue. When she is unable to continue, she will also hand over to the night shift to also continue. And the night shift is unable to meet all the goals, she also hands over to the morning nurse and it goes on and on in that cyclical manner organize information to change of shifts reports okay so implementation of the nursing intervention here see the client the nurse checking the vitals of the child this is an intervention that is being is being done now it helps during the implementation describe a category of nursing behavior in which the action necessary for achieving the goal and outcome are initiated and completed. All that we are saying is that action that the nurse can do independently must be started with before you now do the other interventions that is initiated by the physician and those that is going to be collaboratively done with other paramedics, okay? So always and always and always remember that we have independent nursing practices. If you are caring for your patients and you should start with that on your nursing care plan before focusing on those that is being initiated by the physician and the other paramedics. Now we have types of nursing intervention. We have the standing orders and we have the protocols. With the standing orders, document containing order for use of routine therapies, okay, such as um, you have your client who is um, probably um, di diabetic, and so you say two 
monitor the glucose every two hours. This is what a standard order. And it is towards the treatment of the client. Monitoring guidelines, monitoring the glucose or checking the, monitoring the BP for hypertensive patient every hour or doing certain diagnostic procedure for certain specific conditions are all what the standard order. With the protocols, uh, these are written plans specifying the procedures to be followed during care. So for instance, if we have a written protocol being pasted on the ward that every patient who come with this clinical manifestation, this medication should be administered such as the anti-malaria without probably not necessarily going through the um, rapid test. Or they can also bring another protocol which says every client who presents all the clinical manifestation for malaria, we should do the RDT, the rapid test, okay, diagnostic test, to ascertain whether indeed we have malaria parasite before we administer the anti-malaria. In all these guidelines or protocols, depending on the institutional policies, you can adhere to it without any fear whatsoever. Okay, and most hospital, of course, among the protocols is every client who comes, this is a routine check, you have to what check their vital signs or monitor it at all times. Now let's look at example of the collaboration with other healthcare providers in effective intervention, like I mentioned earlier. The imp implementation involves reassessing the clients, reviewing and revising the existing care plan, organizing resources and care delivery equipment or personal environment, uh, personal um, or environmental things. For instance, if the client is having cold is having rigo okay the environmental things you can do to bring down this rigo probably you can close nearby windows because the person feeling chills that's why he's having the rigo right so you can close nearby windows to bring or to bring warmth to the clients okay so that is one of the environmental resources that you could put in place to um, help implement now, evaluation, which is the last step of nursing care process. A goals evaluation simply means you are comparing with the, your, your goals, your main objective. Okay, You want to find out the implementation that you have done. Have you been able to achieve your goal as expected? So the goals are evaluated. Adjustment of the care plan are made. If the goal was fully met, partial met or not met, you will do that. And if goal was fully met, the care plan will be discontinued. But if goal was partially met or not met, what it means is that you will have to what adjust the plan of care and to ensure that at the end of the day, the intervention you are going to put in place, you revise it, you start planning, and then you now re-evaluate again to see if your goal will be met. So redefining priorities is so, so important. Allah bless you so much for your time and attention. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and share for more beneficial videos as student nurses or practicing nurses. Suggest areas of your interest as students so that we can look at those and then let me know any question that you would want to be for it to be addressed. Thank you and God bless you for your time and attention. Have a wonderful, stay safe and stay blessed. Please take good care of yourselves. Have a blessed day. Bye.